Hey there everybody, Morgan here from Simple Networks. Today we're going to be talking about how to set up VLANs in Unify. Now, you'll often find that the language used in Unify's interface doesn't always match up with, you know, what you learned, say, in school. And that can be a little confusing. So, this video kind of aims to help close that nomenclature gap, if you will, at least when it comes to VLANs. Now, I'm going into this video with the assumption that you understand VLAN basics. You know, this isn't meant to be a, a video that teaches you the concept you know, of VLANs or anything like that. So just something to consider. I can certainly make you know one of those videos. If anyone is interested, just leave me a comment below. So let's get started with VLANs in Unify. So in Unify, they refer to VLANs as networks. So if you're going to create a new VLAN, you're going to create a new network. That can be a little confusing at first, but it kind of makes sense once, once you get used to how Unify works. So to create a new VLAN or network, you're going to have to go into the network section. Makes sense, right? So it's going to be a little different depending on what interface you're working with. So they have the classic interface. That's the interface that's been around forever. That's the one I prefer and I'm going to be using in this instructional tutorial. However, they also have the new interface. Of course, they had to go and add a new interface that just confuses everyone. Uh, for some things, like networks, it's pretty much the same. So in the old classic interface, you'll just go down to the settings gear here and click networks. There you go. In the new one, same thing. It just looks a little different. You'll go to the settings gear and click networks. Now, later on, you're going to see where the two interfaces do, you know, kind of show things differently and organize things differently. But for now, settings gear, networks, all right? Then you'll come to a page that looks like this. Now, as you can see here, this is an actual example from a network that I manage. So I want you to pay attention to corporate LAN here, the employee network, and the guest network. Now our corporate LAN, that is our main LAN. That's the actual LAN that you set up when you set up your Unify equipment, right? You'll notice it doesn't have a VLAN tag, and that's technically because it's really not the VLAN, it's the actual local area network. And then these are all VLANs of that physical LAN. Kind of kind of weird, but you'll, you'll get used to it. So if you look at the employee network here that is set up as VLAN 2, and that gets its own subnet, and you'll see the guest network here is VLAN 3, and gets its own subnet. This is just a VPN, you don't need to worry about that, and this is our connection to the internet. So let's say we want to create a new network or a new VLAN. We'll just click create a new network, and you'll come to a page like this. Now this is a little video recording, and I'm going to kind of walk you through what I'm doing here. So first things first, we're going to give our network or VLAN a name. So I just gave it the name test network. And we are going to leave this as a corporate network. Now you may be tempted, you'll see VLAN only. That's an option over here. You don't want to use that if you're using a full Unify system. So if you've got, you know, like a Unify secure gateway and a Unify switch and Unify access points, you don't want to use VLAN only. VLAN only is if, let's say you had a edge router or a PFSense box that you built, right? And that is the router or gateway hosting the VLANs. And you're trying to pass those VLANs through to Unify switches and Unify access points. That's when you'll want to use VLAN only, as all it's going to do is pass the VLAN through. In this case, we actually want to host the VLANs on our Unify system, right? So we're going to keep it as a corporate network. I'm going to do it on our main LAN interface, and here's where you're going to give your network the traditional VLAN tag. So I chose 10. Now here it's important, gateway IP slash subnet. So you're going to see I'm going to enter my subnet here. We're going to go with 192.168.10. Now, you may be tempted to put 10.0 slash 24, right? Kind of makes sense. That's the subnet. However, notice gateway IP over here. Unify won't accept that. They're going to want you to put the gateway IP, so 10.1 slash 24, and it's going to fill out the rest for you there. And that's that's pretty cool actually it just populates everything for you and for the rest of this we're really not going to change any settings because this is an example we're just going to leave this network slash vlan pretty basic the only thing you're going to see me do here is update the dhcp range to make sure i've got room for some static ips other than that we're going to leave it pretty bone stock obviously you can change settings uh, to accommodate what you need so we're going to go ahead and click save and there you go as you can see up here, we've got test network, 
VLAN 10. So we've created a VLAN. That's awesome. So the next step is we have to get these VLANs to pass through the switch and apply them to switch ports, right? And that's called creating switch profiles in Unify. You'll create a switch profile that specifies which networks are tagged and which networks are native, and then you can apply those profiles to your different switch ports. Now here's where the classic interface versus the new interface kind of takes in not so fun turn. So if you're on the classic interface like I am, it's really easy. Settings wheel, and then you click profiles. Unfortunately, not so easy in the new one. It's by no means hard, but it's a little more confusing. So you'll click on that settings wheel, then you'll go to advanced features, and then you'll see a window come up on the right that has your switch profiles. In this case, we're still going with the classic. So you'll come to a window that looks like this. You'll see up at the top radius or switch ports. Obviously, we want to go over to switch ports and create new switch port profiles. First thing you do is go over to switch ports. And then you're just going to add a new port profile. And you're going to come to a page that looks like this. Now, the first thing you're going to do is give your thing, give your switch port profile a profile name so it's easy to identify. We're just going to go with test profile here, and we're going to leave all the PoE settings alone for now. Now here, where we have a native network, you're going to see me pick a network here. We're going to go with our test network. So that's the network that is going to pass through on the ports we apply it to, you know, by default. Untagged traffic will go through there. And then we get to select which tag networks we also want to allow through that port. So I'm going to go with the employee network here. You can configure your advanced options as you see fit. Again, not going to do any here because this is just an example. So we're going to go ahead and save that. And there you go. You've created your switch port profile. Not too bad, huh? All right. So the next step is we have to actually apply those switch profiles to switch ports, specific switch ports, right? So this is real easy from the main page, your main, you know, dashboard, if you will. You're just going to click on this over here, the little Unify Access Point outline, and list all your devices. Once you do that, you're going to pick the switch you want to apply the port profile on. Now, before we continue, it's important to note, not all Unify switches support custom profiles. Some Unify switches only support, you know, the already created profile that happens when you create your switch port. So just a native network and you can't add like a bunch of tagged networks and stuff like that. So make sure you've got the switches for this. But assuming you do, next step is to select the port on the switch that you want to use. In this case, we're going to go with port 15. Click the little edit icon over here. And here is where, right down here where it says switch port profile, is where we can go and select our custom profile. Under custom, you see our test profile. And we can name the switch or the switch port uh, for ease of administration. After that, you're just going to click apply, let the switch provision, and that is it. That is the full process of creating a VLAN, creating a custom switch port profile to go with it, and then applying that to the switch port. So now if we were to plug anything in, let's see if I can back this up a little bit. If I were to plug anything in on port 15 with our custom profile applied, Natively, it will go to the test network we created. However, if I plug, say, a voice over IP phone in it that's tagged with VLAN 2, which is our employee network, that will also work. So if you understand VLANs, which if you're watching this, I suppose you, you should, um, then this should start to make a lot more sense to you. It is a little different than you, you know, would traditionally learn with... Uh, I don't know, textbooks, or if you went to school for this, uh, the concepts are the same. It's just the nomenclature is different. The language is different, right? So that's it. That is all for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Hopefully it was able to gain you a better understanding of how Unify and the whole Unify system works. If you have any additional requests for videos, leave them in the comments below. Any questions or anything like that, be glad to answer them down there as well. And I'll see you in the next video.